Hey guys, today we're taking a look at another in-ear monitor from Tanchgym. I previously reviewed the Oxygen from Tanchgym, and if you saw that review, you know that I thought that that IEM was pretty special. I'll also place a link to that review in the description below if you want to check that one out too. But for today, we're taking a look at the original version of the HANA, the little sister of the Oxygen, if you will. And for this review, I will stress that this is the original variant of the HANA, as Tanchgym has recently and unexpectedly announced that they plan to release an updated version of this IEM sometime soon. So it remains to be seen which version of the HANA reigns supreme and how either compares to the Oxygen. But since I haven't got my hands on the HANA update yet, today we're just taking a look at the original HANA. So let's get into it. So the build here is pretty similar to that of the Oxygen. Like that IM, this shell is pretty small and made entirely of metal, specifically stainless steel in the case of the HANA. However, it feels a little bit less weighty, both in the ear and in the hand compared to the Oxygen. Another difference is with the nozzle here, is the angle seems to be much better in the ear with the HANA's stock tips compared to the angle that the Oxygen had which fit awkwardly in my ear with all tips other than EPRO horn tips. With the HANA, the stock tips are much nicer, the rubber is more comfortable, and they sealed easily in my ears. The HANA comes with two types of white ear tips, treble enhancing and bass enhancing. I prefer the bass enhancing variety, which is what comes with the IEM right out of the box, and I found that this type of tip produced the most balanced sound. Like the Oxygen, however, the fit here is relatively shallow compared to a lot of other IEMs, and the HANA just rests gently in the crevice of my Konka. The left faceplate is screen printed with HANA, and the right faceplate hosts the Tanchgym logo. The underside is screen printed with Tanchgym HANA in all uppercase lettering, and an L denoting left, and an R denoting right. All screen printing is done in gold lettering, while the shell is painted in a toilet seat white. The two pin connection at the shell is recessed and the cable that the HANA comes with is a single plastic sheath twisted cable with a silver and copper colored core. The terminating straight 3.5 millimeter jack is smaller than most and in the same golden color as the two pin connectors at the initiation point. The cable looks extremely posh and matches the IM's aesthetics, but this was not the easiest to use without significant break in as it did tend to kink up a bit here or there. Whilst this might go away with extended use, I ended up using a Tripoin Zoni cable for the majority of this review, as it was easily accessible and I could run the HANA in balanced operation this way if I chose to. But be aware, swapping to some other cables did change the sound profile of the HANA slightly, as its driver was somewhat sensitive to cable swaps. Regarding the driver used in the HANA, this is a pretty unique technology, making use of a high rigidity secondary polymerized liquid crystal diaphragm and a third generation DMT high magnetic flux driver. And for a single dynamic driver, the HANA truly does impress, even if it is in unexpected and different ways compared to the oxygen. So let's start things off with the technical prior to moving on to the sound profile. Beginning with the stage, things are pretty wide and with some beyond average depth to its sound field. Staging is at least twice as wide as the oxygen, which is much more intimate in comparison. Separation and layering are good, but not as intricate as the oxygen's. Although, separation capabilities and size of its sonics does improve with power, as I am able to observe additional space between notes with the HANA when it is well amplified. For example, the HANA sounded good off of just about everything, but it really opens up when it's ran off of the THX AAA 789. Imaging tracks well, and the stage has a natural orientation to its layout. Instrument distinctiveness and placement are also both accurate. Both male and female vocals isolate well, and are slightly forward in the mix, 
but not as distinctive or softly articulate as the vocals presented in the Oxygen. So vocals are done really, really well, but the Oxygen is still more of the vocal master compared to the Hana, which was somewhat less sophisticated in its vocal presentation. As a general theme, the Oxygen's presentation is probably more unique, whereas the Hana's presentation is less so. While this might sound like a bad thing, I actually think that most people might actually prefer the tonal balance and more straightforward implementation of the Hana compared to the Oxygen. The Hana also excels in its transient reproduction versus the Oxygen, and it's tighter and resolves its notes more quickly than the Oxygen does. In a number of ways, I have come to think of the Hana as the Oxygen's rambunctious little sister. Yet, when the Hana is hit with some power, it is also clear that the two are very much so related. The Hana's tonality has a slight warmth to it, but it's mostly neutral. This surprised me, as I suspected from reading other reviews that the Hana might be bright leaning, but I did not find this to be the case, even if its timbre was less shadowy compared to the Oxygen's. Resolution is appropriate for the price point, and detailing is beyond average. Still, it won't keep up with more expensive sets. Clarity is similar to something like the final A4000, so the sonic picture is well articulated, but it probably goes without saying that one can gain some additional transparency from stepping it up to the Oxygen, the Final Audio B3, or another more expensive set. In any case, the Hana's sound profile is a clear one, which comes across as mid-forward without ever being overly aggressive. It rises somewhat early and peaks at 2.5k, but never sounds shouty, harsh, or strident to my ears. The mid-range always seems full and representative of all major sonics, without any notable peaks or valleys. The general lines of the Hana's frequency response follow a Harman tuning, and the treble is well extended, producing a decent amount of information in air beyond 10k. Yet, I also wouldn't say that air is a particular strength for the Hana either. Instead, I would say that the amount of air produced by the Hana is natural sounding and smooth, and not under or over accentuated. Nevertheless, the treble avoids any sharpness, as it does dip slightly from 8 to 11k or so, giving the impression of a nicely rolled top end, which is not only detailed and pleasing, but also non-fatiguing to the listener. Overall, I would say that the treble is accentuated enough to provide sufficient detailing without fatigue, while the mids are forward enough to sustain interest, but not so forward as to denote any sonic funny business. All genres of music are soothing to the brain with the Hana, and other than a slight warmth to its tonality, it does not appear as if one is listening to a flavored or artificial source here. So, while the treble and mids are excellent, the bass here is extra special. In comparison to one of my favorite IEMs, the Final Audio B3, the Hana is less resolving and not quite as separative overall. But given the price difference, this is not a major knock on the Hana, yet, the B3, even though it has great bass for an all BA set, still can't keep up with the dynamics of the Hana. The Hana's bass is also not as tight as, say, the Final Audio A4000, but it is less intensive, and there is more sub bass representation in the Hana. And I'd say that its dynamics overall produce low end sonics, which are quite natural to the ear in this regard. I would generally describe the bass of the Hana as nimble and most quick to resolve. It rumbles softly, but well, and has organic decay and sustain. It's certainly more dynamic than the Moondrop Blessing 2, and that's for sure. In fact, I think this set could be a drummer's dream, as impact on drum heads are not only heard, but also felt, yet they're still never fatiguing, even over the course of long listening sessions. Danny Carey's drums on Lateralis by Tool are great examples of drum play by the Hannah. And while I think the bass is a strength for the Hana, one should also take note that this is more stylistically an assistive bass than an assertive one. So even though the bass is slightly elevated on the Hana with its bass-centric tips selected, it is still not a bass prominent or bass forward set. In other words, the Hana's low end is never more forward than the track requires 
or the recording suggests. The Hannah also has great bass dispersion, meaning that it has a good blend of sub bass, mid bass, and upper bass frequencies across the lower portion of the frequency response range. Negatively, there is a mild amount of sub bass diffusion, and while this does detract from the Hannah being superbly accurate in its low end reproduction, it is also super satisfying to listen to. Flight of the Cosmic Hippo by Bay Lefleck and the Flecktones depicts a good example of this phenomenon, as Victor Wooten's bass line was a little bit fuzzier and less tight than it typically is, but still warmly gratifying to my ears. As a final analogy, I think of the low end in the Hanna as similar to a snappy yet musical 10 inch subwoofer in a two channel speaker setup. So, the Hanna actually has great tonal balance, and this is why in the emerging battle amongst other anime girl flavored IEMs in the current audiophile marketplace, the Hanna is actually my pick for the best girl. But I do hate using the term tonal balance these days, as meager reviewers have been overly relying on this description, often using it inaccurately to describe an overly warm, grainy, or V-shaped presentation with boomy bass. But this is not what tonal balance actually is. As the name suggests, tonal balance indicates balance across the entirety of the frequency response range with good, evenly distributed sonics represented in the low end, mid range, and treble regions alike. If in balance, sonics are never overly recessed nor overly emphasized in any particular area. And in a nutshell, this is what one actually hears with the HANA. While it may not be end game in terms of its resolve, layering, or separation, or produce haunting vocals like the oxygen, it images well and ultimately resolves enough to produce natural sounding sonics with enough musical character and technicality alike to sustain one's attention for a soothing day's listen. But let's wrap things up with some brief comparisons amongst other standouts in the price range. Compared to the Ico OH-10, the HANA is more forward in both its vocals and mid-range, while having less of a low-end emphasis. Compared to the FIO FH-3, the HANA is more neutral in its tonality, but more dynamic in its impact, and more balanced across the totality of its frequency response spectrum. Compared to the TriStar C, it's less resolving, but with more of a natural presentation, including a warmer tonality and a wider, more accurate soundstage and smoother imaging characteristics. Compared to the CCC Plume, the HANA also lacks some resolution, but has a wider staging and is a much smaller IEM with a much better fit. And finally, compared to the Moondrop Blessing 2, the HANA is more musical, less stark in its character, and simply put, more enjoyable to listen to over the course of a day. Is it as technical as The Blessing 2? No. But if given the choice between the two, I'm definitely reaching for the HANA 100% of the time. So needless to say, I really enjoyed the HANA here, and I ultimately am not sure why Tantium feels the need to update its tuning. But perhaps in this case, ignorance is bliss, and the new variant might even be better. Only time will tell. Still, as of right now, to me, it comes down to the original HANA, the Tri-Star C, and the CCZ Plume for the best earphone in the price range, with those who favor clarity reaching for the Star C or the Plume, while those valuing tonal balance reaching for the HANA. But keep in mind that this is also the original variant of the HANA, which means we are not sure if the adjustments that Tantium has made with the most recent release will either be for the better or for the worst. And with that, I'm out for now, but don't forget to follow and support the channel here, on Discord, at the blog, via Instagram, at the Twitterverse, or become a Patreon for only $1.50 a month. As of right now, there are a ton of initial reviews up on the Patreon, which will eventually work their way to YouTube, but if you're looking for my first take early on all the audio gear, it's usually there to start with. So consider signing up for Patreon access for early release, written content, and photos there. I'll also ask you to note that I purchased the HANA from Athos Audio, 
and although I did so with my own funds, I do have an affiliate link with them. I'll place this link in the description below in case you're interested in picking up the HANA or anything else from them for that matter. It really helps the channel out when my audience uses this link, so consider it if you're in the marketplace. But obviously, no pressure otherwise, and peace for now.